I j just recently joined the uh, AI lab and I'm very excited to see the, all the uh, fantastic, wonderful uh, activities going on, um, including today's symposium, and I'm glad you can all come here. So um, first, uh, based on our experience, we know that language communication plays an important role in human learning. So the teachers selectively demonstrate knowledge to be transferred to the students, so the students don't have to go through trial and errors or statistic procedures. But this process um, can speed up learning and uh, heavily rely on the communication and motivation of the humans, uh, hu human teachers. So then the, since it's so prevalent in human learning, one question we're addressing is, can we teach robots new skills or knowledge through language communication? So let's say you have a robot and you want to teach robot how to make uh, the kind of smoothie you like. So for example, you can teach robots through language uh, instructions and also demonstrate to the robot how to perform the action. Uh, pick up the uh, strawberry, put it on the uh, cutting board and slice into pieces, so on and so forth. And during this process, the robot can also ask questions. At the end of this interaction, uh, we would like the robot to be able to acquire uh, this kind of uh, grounded uh, uh, task structure. So here in this structure, it keeps the hierarchical relations between task and subtasks, and the linguistic symbols can also ground it to the uh, physical world, so it can help robots to perceive and act. And with structure, the robot can perform uh, this task in the future. But however, coming, uh, arriving at this uh, task structure is not trivial. It's extremely challenging for many, many reasons. So for example, humans and the robots are co-present in a shared world, but then they have mismatched capabilities in perceiving the world. So their representation of the world will be significantly misaligned. And then on top of it, humans has a vast amount of uh, uh, knowledge about how the world works, but robot doesn't have. So it would be very difficult for the robot to follow these language instructions. And as we can see here, the language instructions involve a lot of use of uh, concrete uh, action verbs. So in the next just uh, 10 minutes also, I want to share with you some of the uh, problems we have worked on involving these uh, concrete uh, verbs. So the first problem we looked at is the grounding of verb arguments to perception. So we know verb semantics can be captured by the frames, which specifies the key ingredients here we call the semantic rules um, that allow the understanding of the situation. So for example, take has taker, things taken, things taken from, things taken to. So if we want a robot to be able to follow instructions, the humans, uh, the robot will have to first identify these rows from the running text and will also have to be grounded to these uh, rows to the uh, physical environment. So my former student, Xiao Hua and Qiao Zi has worked on this problem. So we started looking at some existing data set and uh, extended some graph models. But I would really like to show you here is if we look the, use the annotated vision, uh, it can get a pretty decent performance, but however, when we look at the, use the automated vision, uh, the performance really uh, falls apart. So what this really suggests that computer vision, uh, despite recent uh, advances, still faces many challenges, especially in unconstrained environment. So this brings the question, what can we do at the language side um, in, in order to uh, help with this kind of a grounding. So let's take a first look at the, what happens in the physical world. So he takes out the cutting board, the location of the cutting board changes. She cuts the cucumber, the cucumber changes from one big piece to uh, several smaller pieces. And in fact, linguistic studies have shown that these concrete action verbs often denote change of the state in the physical world, but then there haven't been, uh, there weren't any detailed accounts um, in terms of what kind of a physical state change that might, uh, might occur. So my uh, student Child and, uh, and uh, Malkin, they did some studies and collect some data and identified 18 dimensions of state change that might, um, might be perceived from the environment. So the idea is that if we know about these verbs, their state change that can actually provide, hopefully can provide some higher level uh, processing guidance for visual processing. And the, uh, when we in incorporate these uh, 
causality knowledge into the graphic models, uh, they can in, uh, significantly improve the performance. So this is just one example about um, linking action to the uh, verbs to the perception. But then we have another question. Let's suppose the robot can perfectly, for example here, put the apple on the plate, can perfectly ground this apple on the plate to the environment. Can the robot perform the action? And the answer is not quite. So before I started working with the roboticist, I thought robots are very smart. But after that, I have to change my, uh, my thought. It's because, for example, this uh, industrial, uh, industrial uh, robotic arm, it only knows three primitive, primitive actions, open gripper, close gripper, and move to. So if you want the robot to put the pl uh, uh, apple on the plate, it will have to translate this uh, uh, action into a sequence of uh, primitive actions. So as many of you probably already know that the heart of the problem is the planning. So then the question is how to link the uh, verb representation with the underlying planning system. And uh, my student, uh, uh, Zi, former uh, student, Lan Boshi, has looked at this problem. And uh, here we show the example uh, from this uh, simulated Baxter robot. So we teach the robot you know, how to fill the cup with water through step-by-step -step instructions. So the robot can either go through these actions uh, by itself, so experiences they change, or can observe the change uh, from uh, what human, uh, uh, by observing what humans performing. So then the ideally, if we can um, capture the state change and uh, explicitly model the change of state as part of a, a grounded verb representation, it can potentially provide a link here. So we actually apply some classical AI approaches, use the uh, verb, um, use the hypothesis space to represent grounded verb semantics, and this hypothesis space can be incrementally updated uh, through continuous interaction with humans. So when um, the robot receives a new command, essentially it will just go to the, the knowledge base of all these hypotheses to find the best hypothesis to, uh, to do the planning. Uh, there could be many different ways to uh, model and learn these uh, best hypotheses. Uh, but that's not the whole story because the world is full of uncertainties. So there, uh, the algorithms will have to be able to handle these uh, uncertainty. So uh, what Lambo has done is to look at, you know, question answering strategies to reduce the uncertainty, essentially applying the reinforcement learning to learn a policy of a question answering. And uh, some results shows that uh, these uh, learned model uh, based on reinforcement learning can perform better than other strategies, can also significantly reduce the uh, number of turns in terms of, of during the learning or execution phase. Uh, so next I'm just gonna show you a quick demo of the system. Uh, we impl implement the system in, in our Baxter robot. And uh, the system has, the robot has some primit, primit uh, basic knowledge about like some objects and some spatial relations, but it doesn't have, in this case, the human wants to uh, try to teach the robot how to put something on something else. And here are the, uh, some ambiguities uh, you're gonna see, okay. the robots uh, encountered during interaction. Place the kettle on the stove. I don't know how to do it. Could you show me? Sure. This is how you do it. After the action, the state of the kettle should be on the stove, correct? Yes. Sure, I'll try to reproduce this action, put everything back, and say, ready. Ready. I'm going to perform this action. Let me know if it's correct. Yes, that is correct. All right. Place the tropical juice on the cutting board. Which is the tropical juice? It is the pink bottle. When you say tropical juice, do you mean that bottle? Yes. Let me know if it's correct. 
so you, uh, you get the idea. So I just show you two examples where uh, when we model the state, uh, physical state of the world, it can yes, help uh, linking oh, verbs to, um, to perception and also to action. So in fact, this kind of uh, cause effect uh, understanding we humans developed at very young age. The eight months old can shake the rattle to hear its sound. So if for the robots to eventually work with a human as a partner, robots will have to have the same kind of uh, cause effect understanding ability. So uh, we, uh, my student uh, Charles recently looked at uh, um, this uh, problem of a naive physical uh, action effect prediction. Uh, so here, given, for example, given a verb noun pair, squeeze bottle, and given a set of images that describing different states of the bottle, the goal is to be able to identify these uh, uh, states that describe the effect of this action. And similarly, given the um, state, uh, the goal is to identify the verb noun pairs that could cause this action. And our goal is not really trying to learn from large amount of data, but rather from small number of examples, because this would make it possible for humans to teach robots uh, during communication, in communication during, uh, when the situation arises. And uh, okay, so, so we actually uh, use the web data to help the uh, supplement the data to help with learning. Um, so to, to handle this uh, noise from the web data, and we use the bootstrapping approach, we don't have to go into the detail, but, but what I show here is this is a really hard problem. The performance here is really poor, and there is actually big room for uh, improvement, and our goal is really trying to incorporate such kind of model in the interactive task learning. Because in the, it's, very, it's often the case that robots will encounter a new pair, like for, uh, for example here, and then the robot can initiate the um, communication to learn this uh, new, uh, uh, new action. Uh, for example, asking for the effect descriptions or uh, generate the effect descriptions from the uh, existing embedding space, and from there we can learn. Um, so I just want to quickly show that we incorporate these ideas also into the Baxter robot um, to learn the new verb noun um, pairs. Here is a quick demo. Hi, Becky. Hello, can you teach me how to make smoothie? Yes. What is the first step to make smoothie? Peel the orange. Sorry, I am not familiar with this action. Please show me what the orange looks like after peeling. How would you describe the effect of this action? Now the orange is peeled. The skin is removed. Got it. Here are some images I found. Please take a look at my screen. Which of these images show a peeled orange? The first, second, and fifth. Okay. I will learn from these images. What is next to make smoothie? Next, you put the orange into the blender. Okay, what is next to make smoothie? Next, you turn on the blender. Did you first close the blender lid? Yes. Okay, what is next to make smoothie? The task is done. Thank you for Nobody teaching wants me. to have this cup of smoothie yet, but... You know, in the Hi, future, Becky. you will. <laughs> Hello. Please test if I know how to make smoothie. Okay. Okay. What is the first step? So this is Peel an orange. Quick. I have peeled an orange. Can you tell which orange it is? This is the peeled orange. Now can you tell which one it is? This is the peeled orange. Good. What is next? Put the orange in the blender. Shall we turn on the blender? No. First you should close the blender lid. 
Okay. Now, shall we turn on the blender? Yes, that is correct. Okay, um, so this is my conclusion slide. Um, so to enable language communication with robots, we're really at the intersection of uh, multiple disciplines. And uh, it takes a multidisciplinary, really dedicated uh, multidisciplinary uh, collaborative effort here. So I would like to invite you to join me on this exciting uh, journey um, to explore this uh, landscape, to identify junctions and uh, build pathways uh, in this fascinating space. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, that's a very good question. Actually, there's, a, a, in fact, there are a lot of applications that uh, language uh, communication with the robot will play an important role, okay? Uh, for example, in the health domain, the system, uh, system uh, technology, in education domain, the training, you know, technology like tutoring, tutoring systems, in the defense, like the sp uh, search and, uh, you know, rescue, okay, that can also be used. So the, um, we would like to human partners to be able to work with these kind of robots and the you know, language communication becomes very important. And very often on the, in the field, you may encounter some new things the robot doesn't know. There is no time you know, to, for the robot to explore all possibilities. And also, there is no large amount of data available. So what really um, available to the, to the robot is the human partner. So be able to enable humans to teach these kind of robots through language and through demonstration becomes really important. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Can I ask one more question or no? Short question. Great. Well, it's not a short question. Uh, Joyce, I'm just wondering. So this is Jason over here. Oh yes, yes. Hi. Okay. So you know, you mentioned like an eight-month-old can do a lot more things than maybe you know your your robot can. So what changes do we need to make to the types of models that you're using in order to allow like much less bootstrapping, right? The structure of different verbs is not something I teach to my eight-year, eight-month-old or two-month, you know, or or eighteen-month-old. So we're, you're giving a lot of information to the models, and yet yes. we're still seeing like you know what, slow, slow, slow progress. But um, what can we do differently that, that causes us to be able to bootstrap with less information? Uh, I think that it is a, first of all, it is very important to uh, to really understand okay how children learn these kind of uh, uh, verbs and uh, causality kind of information. So language acquisition with the causal uh, perception. Um, so right now we're looking at a different approach, okay, uh, we have not put into a lot of insights in the how children acquire this kind of uh, knowledge. I think that for the future it is very important to incorporate that uh, into, the, into, the, into the process. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but we can certainly explore that. They're just, uh, um, but also I don't think that uh, we should give the robot completely zero code start. Okay, we should, because the children already have some of the abilities uh, that to, to help them to learn, for example, joint attention and all that. So that kind of uh, abilities we could give the robot to start with. Uh, but then the, the really is this the process, the mechanism, uh, we need to also uh, get inspiration from child language acquisition. Thank you.